Hey, I gotta tell you, I'm really, really geeked, pumped for next week's 25th anniversary Raw show. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal to me. And as I continue to see the names being ticked off and the way this whole event is going to play out, I'm really, really excited for the show. There isn't a lot that excites me about today's WWE product. So whenever I do get something, I'm really going to latch onto it and sink my teeth into it. Oh God. But think about it. They're going to be doing the show with split venues at the Manhattan Center, at the Barclays Center. This is cool. All these big names coming back. you got Taker coming back. Please, not wrestling John Cena at Mania. You've got Hall. You've got Nash. Austin. All the other names that have been mentioned. Apparently, people are giggly tits about Brother Love making an appearance for some ungodly known reason to me. But hell, I'll be happy to see him, too. It's just... It's going to be one of these nights of three hours of nostalgia, a spot fest fun of, oh, yeah, these guys are still alive. Hey, cool, they're still alive too. And you know what? I could use that. I don't care. And the whole thing, I'm sure some people are going to complain about it, and you would expect me to complain about it, talking about how this is the go-home show for Raw before the Royal Rumble. Why... Are you going to sit there and focus on all these legends and not focus on the Royal Rumble? You know what, at this point in time, who the hell cares? Because it's not like this company is doing a bang-up wizard of a job building up to the show anyways. Why not just do a show that actually generates some good feelings, some good buzz, some positive feelings, heading into one of your big four pay-per-views? You have SmackDown the next night. You can focus on more of the nuts and bolts of building up to the damn show. Frankly, who gives a crap? Because when it comes to the Royal Rumble, even the years where the build-up isn't that great, it's still the Royal Rumble. Just like it's still WrestleMania. There's still a certain buzz and a feeling associated with it that comes with it that says even when the build isn't great, you still naturally get amped up, pumped up, and excited for it. And I look at something like this, and I say typically the WWE would do their three-hour Raw, their two-hour SmackDown, the week of the Royal Rumble, and very possibly give me a lackluster, lame, suck-ass, go-home show. And that's the general feeling, the general thought, is what they will typically do, at least over the past couple of years. So, I'll take anything at this point that gives me something fun, something that could give me some positive feelings as a wrestling fan, heading into that big show six nights later. When that show is going to be way too damn long. If a show is going to at least be three hours, then it at least needs to be three hours for a reason. And at least I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I feel like the 25th anniversary of Raw is going to be just that. It's going to be a show where three hours didn't do it justice. This is the show that could actually go four hours. The show that could actually go five hours. In-ring action, who gives a crap? Storytelling and building up for the freaking rumble. Kick rocks. Get flipped. Who cares? Because in general, like I said, it's not like the company is doing a bang up job of it. And let's face it, for those of you that still sheepishly fanboy for this damn company and defend so much of the stupid crap that they do, clearly you've accepted turd sandwiches and say, hmm, that's one hell of a cheeseburger, baby. Well, you can step aside and let some of us that still hang on, looking for something cool, have our night to disassociate ourselves from the crap sandwich that is today's WWE product, and look back on the old glory days. Let us have our moment. Let us reminisce about when wrestling was cool and wrestling was fun, and you had unpredictability, you had larger-than-life characters and personalities, guys that could actually talk on a freaking microphone, guys that could actually tell a story in a variety of different ways. And if anything, I'm sure there are going to be one or two big things that happen on this show that ultimately are going to even tie into WrestleMania. I can't wait. I know one thing I don't want to see happen. I don't want to see Undertaker John Cena shoot an angle and that be a match for Mania. But I'm going to have to come to grips with that because it sure seems like that's the reality at this point. But even with that being said, I could put all of that aside for one night. 
and say, The Undertaker is still The Undertaker, and seeing The Undertaker is still a big deal. Seeing Austin, because he doesn't appear on TV all the time, is still a big deal. You never know who might else show up. It might be the people's champ. It might be the icon Sting. It might be Hulk Hogan, brother. He might finally make his return back to WWE, dude. And if he does, I can't wait, brother. Because let me tell you something. This place wouldn't exist without Hulk Hogan, brother. And that's a damn fact. Yes. You could also give me Psycho Sid, him and Steiner in the ring, second rope match. I know some of these things are not going to happen, but there will be enough fun crap that will happen that I feel like, maybe I'll regret saying this, I'll feel like even WWE can't screw this up. So I'm going to strap up, buckle up, and look forward like hell to next Monday's Raw. This 25th anniversary show should be a real doozy. Hey, I'm excited. Don't kill it for me, okay?